Very thankful for the privilege of being with you this weekend. Certainly enjoyed last night. Felt like the Lord was here and blessed us. Enjoyed the song service. Some people, I, I met some new folks this weekend that I haven't met before. And that's always fun. But I do not stand in need of your prayers for a little while as we come before you. I <clears throat> had something on my mind for several days. And about 5 o'clock in the morning, a thought hit me. And I realized, you know, I've really just been looking at it from one angle. But the thought was, such as I have, give I unto thee. And I got to thinking about how that applies to us. And how important that is. Do we realize what we have? And do we give it? And what is it that we give? This little scripture is found in the third chapter of the book of Acts. But I want to look at this for just a little while, and I want us to think about the name of the Lord. That's what we have. Such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's a powerful statement. But let's just look at this for just a little bit. He says, a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. Here's a beggar at the gate of the temple. And he sees these men walking into the temple, and he, he's requesting that they give him something. Peter, fastening his eyes on him, with John, said, look on us. Don't miss that. Look on us. He's going to bear a testimony right here. Look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I want you to think about the power of that statement right there. They had the name of Jesus. Do you realize that we have the name of Jesus? And have you thought about all that we do in the name of Jesus? Uh, at, the, at the close of his prayer a minute ago, what did he say? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in the name of Jesus. We baptize in the name of Jesus. I read over there in the book of Acts that the name of Jesus is a strong tower. And we can come to it and find safety and security. Do we share the name of Jesus? You know, I, I, I got to thinking this morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, and, and I'm thinking about all of those folks that were in my life from years gone by and how they shared the Lord. They shared the name of Jesus. It wasn't just in the doctrine. It was in that they loved to talk about Jesus. Do we love to talk about Jesus? Or do we like to talk about what's wrong with the world and what's wrong with me and what's wrong with the church and what's wrong here and what's wrong there? It's important that we are willing to share uh, the name of Jesus. And in that name, I'm talking about the glory and the power that goes to him as we honor him in our thoughts from last night. 
I mean, we're still in the same thing. But it's one thing for us to do it here. What about out in the workplace? What about out in our community? Do we, are we willing to share the name of Jesus wherever we go? Are we a little bit ashamed of it? Is that a good question or not? How many times have you wanted to talk about Jesus and didn't? I tell you, I've been there a number of times. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm just telling you how it is. You wanted to talk about him, I, and let me tell you, we're not alone. I had an old brother one time, minister. <clears throat> he, he asked me to pray for him that he would be able to find the right words to share his belief and love of the Lord with his children. And you know what I thought? How sad. You know what? I find myself right there. share the name of Jesus. You know, I, I, was, I, I thought about Brother Jimmy last night. And I, Brother Jimmy had an appointment in Dallas back in the 70s. And we, we would go to church. And I, I, I noticed that everybody wanted to sit by Jimmy at lunch. You know why? Because he was sharing the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. What happens when you share Jesus with somebody that's downtrodden, discouraged, uh, going through difficulty? I'll tell you, they're going to be encouraged. We found when we would uh, uh, sit with Brother Jimmy uh, and he'd start to talk about the Lord, we'd all get lifted up, yeah, even after preaching. Uh, and, you know, he never quit. Somebody right there in the picture. But he's not the only one. I remember going to a, a, a meeting at Rush Creek Primitive Baptist Church in St. Clair Bottoms Association back in Virginia. I mean, we're in the hills now. The, the church house was a log cabin on the inside. They put some siding on it, but inside it was a, it was a log cabin. And it had been there since, I think, 1820s or something like that. But there was an old brother that had MS, and he was an elder there, and I'll never forget that man. I talked to him on the phone and gotten acquainted with him on the phone, but he was only able to be there one service during that association. But when that man came in the door, we knew love had come in the door. What was the difference? He came in the name of Jesus. He was there. It wasn't about him. It was about the name of Jesus. I, I saw the same thing over in Arkansas uh, at a meeting. Uh, a, a fellow by the name of Urshel Tillery. I don't know if any of y'all know him. Uh, but uh, uh, when he came in, there was love. What was he doing? He was there to share the name of Jesus. He wanted to talk about the Lord the whole time he was there. Is that what we talk about? You ever go to a meeting and you can't find anybody talking about the Lord? You get a bunch of preachers together and you start trying to ask them a question about the scripture and nobody wants to answer because they're afraid they'll be shut down. Fact. It's a fact. What are we afraid of? Are we afraid to learn more about Jesus? I want us to understand that there is power in the name of Jesus. Uh, and, and when we begin to speak to one another about Jesus in our life, to our children, uh, to our neighbors, uh, uh, we're going to see an end gathering among God's people. Because they're going to be encouraged. Encouraged. Edified. Built up. They're going to come become closer to Jesus. This man was lame in his walk. He couldn't walk. Uh, but when uh, uh, Peter uh, reached for him after saying, uh, uh, Such as I have, give out unto thee, uh, he took him by the right hand and lifted, and this man stood up uh, and walked uh, and leaped uh, and rejoiced uh, and went into the temple uh, uh, rejoicing in the Lord. Did it 
make a difference. Oh, let me tell you, my friends, uh, it makes a difference when we start to talk about the Lord. When we uh, uh, come in His name. You know, we had a meeting out here, <clears throat> first of June at Snyder. And we had a brother from Missouri that had just lost his son. And we knew he was hurting. He got up on Sunday morning, and there I, I think everybody there thought he was going to talk about his son. Instead, guess where he went? He went straight to the Lord and started talking about the Lord. Why would, that, why would he do that? Because he wasn't there in the name of his son. He was there in the name of the Lord. He was there to talk about his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what a great God he is. And all of the things that he's done had done for him. Uh, friends, I, I want us to understand something this morning. Uh, we're here to talk about the Lord. I, I, we want to think about his name. We want to look at him and understand him. Remember David over there in the uh, 17th chapter of 1 uh, Samuel, I think it was. And, and David goes down to visit his brethren in battle. And he to the battle and uh, as he gets down to the battle there's chaos old giants out there and he's belittling the name of the Lord the God of Israel and all of his brothers and Saul included they're not willing to go battle David makes a statement he says is there not a cause let me tell you, my friends, there's still a cause to that. And if we would be an encouragement to our neighbors and uh, giving God glory to his name, it would be in the visitation and the testimony of the name of Jesus. We can talk about how great our God is. We don't have to be ashamed. Uh, and, and if we don't start doing that, we're going to not have anybody But God's the one that opens the door. God's got to open the door. Now, it said when he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up and immediately, I love that, I love that word immediately. Yeah. That, was, that was Peter when he stepped out of the boat, by the way. As soon as the Lord said, come, immediately. He stepped out of the boat. It was later when he started to think, but immediately. He responded here he is walking by faith, stepping off. Immediately, this man <coughs> was strengthened. His feet, ankle bones received strength, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered in, in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Boy, that's, that must have been something to behold, you suppose? If we were to have that today, somebody be so strengthened just from the hearing of the gospel or, or just from the talking in the name of Jesus uh, and that they would leap up and start to shout, what would we think? <laughs> Whatever they're going out for. <laughs> you see how it goes? We're our own worst enemy. We really are. But now then, he, he's going to continue on. And I want you to see the people. They marveled at what had happened. But the first thing they want to do is give John and Peter credit. Well, look what they've done. Look what they've done. I'll tell you what. If the Lord blesses you to preach and you, you sit down and you think, well, look what I've done. You're in trouble already. It's going to be a long time before you preach. I can guarantee it. I've been there. <laughs> I remember one time I, I went to a meeting at Ordway, and there's some old fellow there that came up and said, Brother John, that's the best sermon I ever heard preached in the Trinity Baptist Church. I didn't preach for three months. That's <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing he could have said. Now, <clears throat> as we look at this, it says, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them, and 
in the, in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. They were, they were marveling. They saw something happen. They saw this man strengthened. Do we need strengthening today? I don't know about you, but I need strengthening in my walk. Don't you? How do I spend my time? What is on my mind? We heard it last night. Why can't I meditate in the Lord? Why can't I, my mind be on the Lord uh, all day? It isn't. I, I, I'll be honest with you, it isn't. All it takes is one look away. That's why he said look on us. It's important what we look at. You find that little word behold. I love that word. Behold. Look at this. All through scripture. Everywhere we find that word behold, it's going, we're going to see something important. But he said, look on us. That's important. Where are we looking? Where are we looking this morning? Are we looking at what's wrong with old Baptists? Are we looking at, uh, what we, at ourselves to see if we're it? Or are we looking to the Lord? That our Savior, Jesus, by the way, Matthew 1, 21, I believe it is, uh, he said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus for what? Uh, because he shall save his people from their sins. I, I, I'll tell you, there's glory in that right there. When we can understand that his name is called Jesus because he came to save sinners of whom we are chief. He's the Savior. And he didn't come to try. He came to save. We want to and need to understand that. You know, y'all need to put a clock up here somewhere. <coughs> oh, there it is. Thank you, Brother Don. I, did, I, I hadn't seen that. Uh, it, it, it's Snyder, Brother Don, man. But the name, you know, I love that, that little scripture over there in the book of uh, Isaiah 9 where it's talking about the Lord and the government shall be upon his shoulders and he shall be called wonderful. What is wonderful about Jesus? Everything. Everything about him, is. there's none other like him. He, well, he came to this ground of sin and sorrow with one purpose, which was to redeem the people that didn't deserve. And friends, I want you to know he accomplished that, not just partially, but entirely. He died for a people that didn't deserve it, that's us, and he's redeemed us, and we belong to God. Our debt has been paid in full, and we can rejoice in that, but now then, because we are his, and he has quickened us, uh, we are to walk. important, but I, let me tell you, we need to go beyond the doctrine, because if we're not loving our neighbor, uh, we're not going to give him glory. If we're not looking to him and encouraging the folks around us, his children, then we're, gonna, uh, we're not giving him glory. We have opportunities every day to give him glory. I, and it starts at home. It starts at home, but it doesn't. it's not to be limited there. Uh, we are to encourage. And let me tell you something else. It's not just in the church. It's easy to talk about Bible in the church. Among people that you know agree with you. What about somebody out here in the world that doesn't understand it like you? Are we then not supposed to talk about politics or religion? You know, that's what they say. Two things you can't talk about. We're not going there. But I, I want us to look at religion. Are we afraid to talk religion? Your old grand grandfather, uh, he talked religion everywhere he went. Or Brother Hardy. Uh, and, and they didn't care if you agreed with them on everything. That wasn't what it was about. They were looking to understand more about Jesus. Uh, friends, uh, uh, 
sometimes you'll learn more from somebody that you don't agree with than somebody that you agree with on everything. Sometimes I, that sermon that somebody preaches, I, I think, you know, I didn't believe a word he said. That's the one that does me the most good. I went to a meeting one time, and a brother got up, and he preached, uh, uh, the just shall live by faith. That's all he said. He said it about 15 times and sat down. I thought, man, you need to preach a little. You know what? I got home, and the only thing that I could remember was the just shall live by faith. I ended up studying on that for a good while, preached on it for about five or six times, because it was, it was there. I couldn't, I couldn't deny it. Such as I have, give I unto thee. Such as you have, who have you given it to this week? Have you given it to anybody? Have you testified? Have you talked about the Lord and what he's done for you this week? It's while you're standing in line somewhere. And, you know, usually we're impatient when we're standing in line. <coughs> My wife says I'm impatient. I, I, and I have tend to agree with her. But when we are focused on the Lord and sharing what we see with the Lord, of the Lord, do we touch somebody? Does it make a difference in somebody else's life? Because <coughs> we're not here just so that we can go to heaven and that we can believe the doctrine and go back to church. We're here on this earth to give glory to God. I walked out in Brother Kenny's backyard this morning and the flyers blooming. And some of them I didn't have a clue what were. Let's get on down through this because there's a verse over here I want to get to. Now, notice Peter, when Peter saw the people's reaction, verse 12, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look so ye so earnestly on us? As though we, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. You see what he's saying here? He's saying, we didn't do this. The Lord did. It's not a, it, we didn't do it. The Lord did. He says, the God of Abraham. Here's his, here's his opening. And now he's going to go to the God of Israel right here. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. The God of our father hath glorified his son Jesus. Whom ye delivered up. Is that us? Did we deliver him? He was delivered for our offenses. We're just as guilty as they were. <coughs> and denied him in the presence of Pilate. Oh. Have you ever denied the Lord? That's a. I suspect every one of us have done that. What did we lose? We lost the opportunity to encourage somebody's faith. We don't give them faith, but we encourage the faith that they have. There's a little verse, by the way, over in Romans 1. You remember that one? Uh, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. What's he talking about? 
You know, I've tried to explain that and think about that little verse. And there, actually, I've got two different applications, okay? I, and, I, and I like them both. There is a faith given to us, a measure of faith, and that faith needs to be encouraged, needs to grow. So there is a sense in which that faith that's given to us can grow into a faith that we need, and we're walking in that faith. But what about this? Does your faith ever have an influence on someone else? Have you ever been down in the dumps and discouraged and just, I mean, you just feel like you've lost your last friend and somebody calls and wants to talk about Jesus and next thing you know, you're on the mountaintop. You know what just happened? You went from faith to faith. You went from his faith and what he was understanding and now that you're there with him, so you're edified and brought in. You're encouraged for the walk. Uh, let me tell you, I need that, don't you? I, and it has to do with the thinking, by the way. It is important what we think about. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I can get to thinking. You think with your heart? That's what it says. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We can get thinking about all that's going wrong, and we're down. Israel was the same way. When they ran out of water, they got to murmuring and complaining. The next thing you know, they're sinning against God. And if we're not careful, we'll do that. But when someone calls and encourages us in the Lord, the next thing you know, we get lifted. And now we're not discouraged, we're encouraged, and we become an encouragement to others. It's an infectious thing. Our thoughts in our heart, wherever that is. Now we're, we're thinking about the Lord. And so we're strengthened for the battle. We're not lame anymore, Brother Vance. We're able to walk in the Spirit. Uh, and, and feel that closeness with the Lord. And that's, that's where we want to be as we go through life. <clears throat> I'm going to skip over this because I want to get to verse 16. This is, a, this is a interesting little verse. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. Question, who's faith? Whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him. I personally think those are two different hymns. <laughs> one's the Lord and one's the man. And then there was Peter who was using his faith to make the statement to start with. Such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord of Nazareth, let rise up and walk. So you've got, you actually have the, the faith of the Lord, the name. Then you have the faith of Jesus. Uh, or they have the faith then of, uh, of, of Peter. And then you've got the faith of the man. What happened there was his faith was encouraged and strengthened. That's what he needed. Is that what we need today? For our faith to be strengthened and encouraged in the Lord? That we could walk, the just shall live by faith. You get over in the Old Testament, the just shall live by his faith. Actually, that's one of only two scriptures that deals with faith in the Old Testament. By name. Faith is all through the Old Testament. But it was shut up. Uh, now then, 
this says, the faith which is by him, by Christ, hath given him, this man, that perfect soundness in the presence of you all. He was made whole. Isn't that what we need this morning as individuals? That we would be made whole in the faith of Christ? That our ankle bones would be strengthened, that we'd rise up and walk and give testimony and touch other lives, that they also might rise up and walk as God would give them revelation. You can't give them understanding. God's got to give that. But if they're his, it's there, and you can encourage what's there. This man was at the gate of the temple. He knew where to go. And, and so uh, he was encouraged and strengthened. Uh, and now, brethren, I want that through ignorance you did it as did also your rulers. He's talking to those people that wanted to make them gods. Wow. Very quickly. I've got five minutes. <clears throat> Let's go back and, and look at uh, for one thing. Saul and he said I can't go in this it wasn't tried he didn't he didn't understand it uh, he didn't know how to use it it was too big for him it didn't fit but then he he remembered the lion and the bear what happened here he is faith moving him he's remembering there's that mind again uh, remembering what God has done for him how, so he's, he's seeing the name of the Lord. He goes, he's ready to go to battle. He gathers the five smooth stones and the, the little shepherd bag uh, uh, and his sling, and off he goes. He's going by faith. He's going by faith now, and he's going in the name of the Lord. That's important. He's going in the name of the Lord, of the God of Israel, because uh, that oh, uh, giant had denied the name of the Lord. Here's the battle. Here's the confrontation. Uh, we're going to have this battle all of our life against those that would deny the word of the Lord, but here comes David. He's in the name of the Lord. He's walking in the name of the Lord. He goes out and he stands before the giant in the name of the Lord, trusting by faith in the name of God. The God of Israel that had delivered unto him the lion and had delivered unto him the bear, and he's ready to go to battle. He stands there. The giant comes up, shouts his insults. You know, that's what they did back in those days. <clears throat> they, they, they would come close to where they could hear Start shouting insults. You know why they did that? If you could scare the other one away, then you didn't have to fight. But he stood. Because he was standing in the name of the Lord, and he says, is there not a cause? So he stood, and such as he had, uh, he stood there uh, in the name of the Lord uh, uh, to defend the Lord's name. And he, he picked out one smooth stone. Didn't need all five of them, but he had five. He picked out one stone, put it in his sling, slung it, and it wasn't David's strength that moved that stone. It was the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you look through scriptures, look how many times the name of the Lord comes up. The book of Psalms is full of the name of the Lord. Why not the, Why not just the Lord? Because the name of the Lord carries the authority of all of who he is. My dad was Clifford Jones. I lived in a small town, and they knew me as Clifford Jones's son, which was a problem because he worked at the grocery store. If I did anything wrong, they knew exactly where to go. <laughs> he didn't know about it before I got home. There was an authority. 
We are here this morning in the name of the Lord. Under the authority of the Lord. To worship him. Who is that wonderful. Why wonderful? There's no other like him. Never will be. He was the one perfect lamb of God. There's none other like him. That wonderful counselor. Who do we go to in time of trouble? I tell you, we can go to the Lord every time, and he will take us in his word to where we need to go, to what we need to understand. We have a God that knows everything about us. I, I was just reading about that this week in the book of Psalms. He knows everything about us. That's kind of scary, but it's the truth. The Lord knows every thought. Wow. That's scary, isn't it? fool your wife, but you're not going to fool the Lord. He knows every thought that you've ever thought. And still he loves us. Isn't that something? But he's a counselor. He's not a counselor like the world that wants to point back and look at where you failed. He's a counselor that uh, he's going to show you uh, what's right. He's going to lead you in paths of righteousness for his Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. I, do you like to think about Jesus as the Mighty God? I, I'll tell you, he was both God and man. And we've got to understand that he had to be one of us, but yet he had to be God. And, and we need to understand that he is God. There is a man in heaven today who is God. Amen. He's the Word of God. And he died for us. Everlasting Father. I love that. I, my father's died. He's gone on. I don't have a father, but I still have him. My father sometimes, he corrected uh, his mistakes. Bless God and love. Our Lord never has. He will correct and does, and I thank God that he corrects. But let me tell you, he never corrects you more than you need or less than you need. And he never corrects you uh, uh, falsely, but his correction is perfect. His reproof is just exactly right uh, because he's an everlasting father. And don't leave this one out, the Prince of Peace. You have peace with God by how? By him. Through him. As he became the enmity for us, and you can find that over there in, in, in Ephesians, I believe. That sounds really strange, doesn't it? He became enmity. He became the enemy of God on our behalf. There's the man. step back and receive from God all the judgment that's due us. Wow. What a Savior we have. Why would we not want to honor his name? He met that judgment to perfection. Not one thing was missing. Not one single thing was missing as he met the entire judgment of Almighty God on our behalf. Wow. Why wouldn't we want to praise him this morning? Why wouldn't we want to honor his name and give him glory? Can we share that with our neighbor? I'll tell you, if we don't, we're missing out. They may not receive it today, but they may receive it later on as he opens it to them. You know, the, the word is to be planted. Paul said, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God giveth the increase. I had a, met a preacher one time, and he, was, he got all upset because 
he would get up and preach, and he said, nobody does anything. They just sit there like wooden Indians. <laughs> and, and he wanted to see an immediate response and change in their life. It doesn't work that way. The seed that the word is planted. Preaching is the planting of the word. It gives you something to think about. And so then as you think about it, and you begin to these young preachers at that meeting and I we heard some really powerful sermons I never I don't remember a single sermon that was preached but there was one old man didn't have a tooth in his head come from all the way from Mississippi and he was a, a preacher but they didn't preach him but he preached I asked him what he had on his mind out there under the shade tree on Saturday afternoon and he said, I've been thinking about the three downs of Christ. He looked down, he came down, and he sat down. And I thought, wow, that's unique. I couldn't get that out of my mind. 30 years later, I started studying that sermon. And I found five downs. He looked down, he came down, he kneeled down, he laid down, and then he sat down. How simple. And yet, there's the story of Christ. I thank you for your kind attention.